I am super grateful to be here. Uh, you walk into the Heritage Foundation and they say, Do you, are you here for federalism? And I say, yes, and I want fries with that. That's all you have to do. You just come here, you pick it up and go home. So it's incredible to be here. I, I thought about when I, when I was offered this opportunity, when they called me, and, and I thought, what could I share? I've been in the trenches for nearly 10 years now. I thought, what could I share with you from that experience? And the things that came to my mind, the first thing was the great Reagan quote, right? This is a wonderful time to be alive. We're lucky not to live in pale and timid times. We've been blessed with the opportunity to stand for something. And then the, the, the great statement from Justice Kennedy in his dissenting opinion in the F NFIB decision. He said, the fragmentation of power produced by the structure of our government is central to liberty. And when we destroy it, we place liberty at peril. On the flight coming here, the, the, the two stewardesses, they asked me, the, excuse me, the flight attendants, asked me what, uh, what I'm coming for. I told them I'm going to be speaking to a group. I'm coming here to fix the government. I'm going to be here for two days. I'm going to fix the government. I'm going to go home, and you guys got to keep an eye on it while I'm gone, right? And they said, oh, my gosh, please tell them. Please tell them we've got to get, we need to have our voice back. They just, they had me in the back of the plane, right, in the little galley in the back of the plane, and they were just, they were just, just, just working on me. This is so critical. We've lost our voice. I wanted to share with you a couple of stories, uh, the essence of a couple of stories. I want to leave you with two very critical takeaways. Another plane story. I was speaking in Des Moines. I was speaking on some federalism issues. It was the week before our session started in 2017. I was sick, and I wanted to get home. I wanted to get ready for the session to start. And uh, I get on the plane, and of course, in Des Moines, there's an absolute freezing rain. The runway's iced over, so we sit on the plane, we sit on the plane, we sit on the plane. Finally, when it takes off, I know I've got to connect through Minneapolis. And so I'm checking my watch. I'm like, great, I'm going to get stuck in Minneapolis, and I'm going to miss. I'm going to be there. I'm not, I'm not going to be there when our session starts. And as we get closer to Minneapolis, and I'm trying to figure out where's the gate and how am I going to get to my gate, I notice this huge giant of a man with a University of Utah football T-shirt on. I thought, well, he's going where I'm going. I'm just going to find him, and I'm going to draft behind him. And so I did. I got off the plane. I grabbed my bag, and I was just like, like he was the pulling guard. And he's just cutting a wave through the people going through the airport. And I'm just running to keep up with him. We finally get to the gate just as they're closing the door. And they let us in. They sit us in the exit row together, and we sit down, and we do the who are you, who are you. Turns out he's the linebacker coach for the University of Utah. He was on a recruiting trip. But he had played football for BYU, and if you know anything about football in Utah, and it's just about football season, right? If you know anything about football in Utah, that's called the Holy War, right? BYU and University of Utah. And so he asked me, well, who are you and what do you, what do, you do? I said, well, I'm Ken Ivory. I'm in the Utah State uh, Legislature. And he says, well, what do you do? <laughs> and I think uh, if I tell him federalism, I may as well speak to him in Japanese, right? I said, well, let me put it this way. So this holy war, right? You get ready for the game, right? It's a whole different intensity. The practices are different. The media is different. The whole level of everything is different. You get close to game time on Saturday morning. The, the, the speech that you give is different. The food that you eat is different. The excitement is different. And you get the big the big rah-rah speech, and you get ready to go out of the tunnel and onto the field, and the stands are absolutely packed, and you get on the 50-yard line, and the other team is there, and you buckle your chin strap, and you look down and there are no lines on the field. He said, oh yeah, that'd be a disaster. He said, yeah, that's what government is like right now. There are no lines on the field. My job is to paint lines on the field. There are no lines to tell the teams where to stand. I said, that's what we're working on. I described federalism to him, and he said, I get it. I get it. There's no lines on the field. Where do we stand? We can't defend a line that we can't define. And this is where we are in federalism today. Second story I'll tell you. We, uh, I'm going to share this with you. You've got to promise not to tell anybody, okay? You can't tell anybody. I had a nickname as a child, and it left serious emotional scars, okay? I'm going to share it with you. You can't tell anyone. The nickname, you ready for this, is Chunky. I hated it. I hate Chunky as a, as a young man, right? Chunky. And, and, and I just absolutely hated it. The scars are there. But there was one advantage to being chunky. I got to be at the very end of the tug of war. Right? So when they did the rope and the other people are in the mud, I'm sitting there in the back, no problem, right? Well, 
our government is like a tug of war. It was established that way. Madison said the two governments will control each other. Hamilton said a certain rivalship will always exist, that they'll prevent each other from crossing the line. It was supposed to be a tug of war, and it started out that way, and, and as was mentioned, I think either Eric or Mark mentioned, that both Hamilton and Madison said, this is no contest. Right? In, in Federals 28 and in Federals 46, they said, the states, this is no contest. The states will be able to prevent the federal government from overpassing the constitutional limits. And so you start out with a tug of war, one against 13. In fact, I think it was Hamilton, Madison, I can't remember, said you'd have one set of representatives competing against 13. It's no contest. And as you started out, the states knew they had to pull. They had to pull together and they had to pull always. They didn't have to pull hard because they had all the power. But they had to pull always. And one after one, as they started going along, one would start dropping off the rope. You know, maybe they forgot why we're pulling on the rope in the first place. And then as we got on a little bit, maybe one said, you know, it's really hard to pull on the rope. I don't think we're going to pull on the rope anymore. And as they got along a little farther, maybe one said, you know, that big guy over there, he's looking a little scary. I'm not going to pull on the rope anymore. And another one said, you know what, he's paying me. He's paying me not to pull on the rope. And one by one by one, the 13 that became 50 all dropped the rope, and now the rope is all over on the federal side. And so now what we talk about, we talk about can we get people in Washington to push on the rope? Maybe they can push the rope back. It doesn't work that way. We have to pull. Federalism is about pulling on the rope. It's not about giving power back from Washington. It's about pulling on the rope. And so that gets to my two, my two takeaways. Number one, we have to know. We can't do what we don't know. We have to repaint the lines on the field. We did a resolution in 2017 calling for a national summit on federalism and calling for a national federalism commission that we get together with the states, with Congress, with the administration to sit down and do the serious work of repainting the lines on the field because we can't defend what we cannot define. Rights we don't know are no better than rights we don't have, and then certainly rights we don't exercise are no better than rights we don't have. So number one, National Conference on Federalism from the White House, because they can act more quickly, a, uh, a, a National Federalism Commission. Second step then would be at the states. A few years ago, a governor from Utah, Governor Lovett, uh, created a conference of states to get the states together to relearn their powers and to understand together as a union of states how to move on this. The third thing would then be Congress. We had the uh, Advisory Council on Intergovernmental Relations at one point, and uh, to have Congress rework on that Advisory Council focused on federalism and then funded so that we have a national initiative to work on repainting these lines. The second thing, uh, any of you know what, what legislator training is like for state legislators? I can give it to you in 30 seconds, right? You get elected, you get elected to office, and you have a meeting. You sit down and they say, here's your parking pass, here's your keys, there's the microphone, there's where the bathrooms are, and just remember the lobbyists are no longer your friends when you're no longer in office. Congratulations, you're a state legislator. I mean, that's it. And across the nation, that's pretty much it. So, so to try to say to do federalism on things we don't know leads me to the second point. The second point is a continuing legislator education certification. There was uh, Megan, is it Rapinoe? Is that how you pronounce it? Rapinoe, the soccer, soccer star? She was on Meet the Press last week. Chuck Todd asked her, you know, Governor Inslee said, we think you could, uh, I'll appoint her to be the Secretary of State. And so Chuck Todd asked her about that. Do you think you could be the Secretary of State? And she said... I don't know if I'm qualified for that. And he made a statement. He said, there's no qualifications for office anymore. There's no qualifications for office. At the state level, James Madison said, we're the sure guardians of the people's liberty. And at the state and national level, we're in charge of life, liberty, and property. And there's no qualifications for office. I would submit that we take it upon ourselves to create a professional standard. We create a professional standard, a continuing legislator education, a standard, maybe even a certification, that we know what this is. We can't pull on the rope if we don't know the rope is even there. We can't defend lines that we don't know where they are. I'll just finish with this. The, the full Ronald Reagan quote, he says, this is a wonderful time to be alive. We're lucky not to live in pale and timid times. We've been blessed with the opportunity to stand for something for liberty and freedom and fairness, and these are things worth fighting for, worth devoting our lives to. So let us go forth with good cheer and stout hearts, happy warriors, out to seize back a country and a world of freedom. Thank you.